The second part of the discussion will focus on what it means to uh, decolonize uh, knowledge. Uh, what I will try to underline here is that even though we sort of uh, work through disciplines uh, and try to problematize Eurocentrism in international relations, we have to also keep in mind that uh, knowledge and uh, knowledge itself and, and disciplinary knowledge, especially, it is uh, still rooted in coloniality. What that basically means is that even though we've had a uh, juridical political decolonization, the way we continue to uh, organize knowledge, think about the world, is, is still rooted in those logics, which goes back to uh, what we were uh, sort of underlying in the first uh, part of the discussion about the spatio-temporal hierarchies. And from the way in which disciplines are organized, uh, we can see how those spatio-temporal hierarchies are rooted in our disciplinary knowledges. Uh, Emmanuel Wallerstein uh, underlines this uh, through what he calls the time space of disciplines. And what he says basically is that uh, we can uh, differentiate disciplines uh, based on uh, three axes the relationship between past and present, the relationship between West and non-West, and uh, the construction of autonomous zones. What this means is that the way we study the world is structured around, again, a spatio-temporal division, a division between West and non-West, and the past and the present, what we think is situated in the past and what we think is situated in the present. Uh, the initial division comes from dividing history from other disciplines in which uh, history is the study of the past, uh, whereas uh, disciplines such as economics, political science, and sociology are uh, studying the present. Uh, the other division comes from the spatialized division, whereby economics, political science, sociology are studying the West are constructed as studying the West and anthropology and oriental studies are about the non-West. Uh, a further uh, division happens uh, between economics, sociology and political science, whereby we divide uh, knowledge into these separate spaces, even though they're all interconnected in a lot of ways. Right? The way disciplines then work uh, already structures uh, our understanding of the world, uh, uh, spatially and temporally, in terms of what we situate is in the past, uh, what we situate as being in the West. This continues uh, to the present in how we then construct who can, uh, not only which knowledges uh, are acceptable within these disciplinary constructs, but then who can theorize about the world, who can write about the world, and whose writings about the world are considered universal, and whose writings about the world are considered as being particular. Uh, and you can see that also in the division between uh, political science, uh, international relations, and area studies, right? Area studies becomes the focus on an area where you apply uh, sort of theoretical uh, discussions and try to understand a specific area. Or, and then you have the converse, which is that international relations where you theorize about uh, how nation states act uh, in a very universal manner. So the, the root of the discussion then is, uh, you know, which knowledge uh, and whose knowledge gets to be universal and whose knowledge gets to be particular. This is then rooted in those spatio-temporal hierarchies that we discussed in terms of what gets accepted and what doesn't get accepted. Uh, and this is a, a point that is put forward as, uh, uh, also by uh, Hamid Dabashi in his piece called uh, Can the Non-European Think, where he underlines that it's not that the, the uh, non-European doesn't think, uh, but maybe that the European cannot read. And the, the point of that uh, statement is to underline that 
the theory that is being produced or the theorizing that is happening outside of what is designated as being Europe does not get recognized as being theorizing. Uh, it gets uh, particularized. Uh, and one of the ways in which you can sort of think through this is to, uh, I would suggest go to any library and look at how different books are organized. Right? Who, uh, if you go to the philosophy section, who is in the philosophy section? Uh, and if you go to sort of regional uh, divisions within the library, uh, who's in those regional uh, sections? So the way in which we've organized knowledge is already uh, so rooted in those logics, the spatio-temporal hierarchies, that it's very hard to break through, even if we do uh, you know, criticize Eurocentrism or criticize the narratives of, the international, of international relations, uh, they still remain rooted in those knowledge systems in terms of what we're able to include as knowledge, what we're able to include as theorizing, what we're able to uh, include as uh, thinking subjects of history. All of these uh, aspects uh, become sort of automatically uh, silenced through the organizational aspect of disciplines. And that is why it is important uh, to underline uh, decolonization of uh, knowledge uh, or the, the decolonization of uh, disciplines in a way that uh, questions those spatio-temporal hierarchies upon which they're based. Uh, an interesting um, debate that continues is then how do we uh, sort of take these steps, right? And, and we have to be sort of, uh, I think, sort of a word of caution is, is that we have to realize uh, that uh, decolonization or uh, what I also like to call it uh, uh, unlearning of our, our own logics uh, is not this uh, one great move at, at the end of which everything gets solved, but it's more of a process. Right? Uh, and it's a process in which we sort of unlearn all the colonial logics that have been sort of inscribed into our being and how we act in the world. Uh, and one of the ways in which to do that is, is then uh, to instill it in our teaching practices. So there's been a lot of discussion as well about uh, decolonizing the curriculum and uh, whether it is a sort of part of the transformation and what does it mean to decolonize the curriculum, right? Is it enough to add, uh, you know, one week where you have post-colonialism in your syllabus? That, that, that does not actually challenge the logic uh, of knowledge production that uh, we're trying to criticize here. What, would, what it would necessitate would be what gets included, uh, the nature of uh, the curriculum itself, the nature of the syllabus itself having to change, not just adding a week here and there, but the, the logic of the teaching itself, what we count as knowledge ourselves. Are we just including, um, you know, uh, articles published in, in certain high ranking journals? Are we including novels? Are we including poetry? Are we including songs? Are we, what, sort, what becomes theorizing to us uh, when we actually want to teach about it? And how can we open that space up further uh, so that uh, disciplinary knowledge and its logics do not limit our way of thinking about the world? But like I mentioned, a word of caution is always part of the discussions about uh, decolonization, I think, because there's always the danger of not realizing how embedded we all are in these disciplinary structures and uh, to what extent uh, we can be uh, sort of critiques of a system in which 
we all are uh, participants. So I think this process requires much more reflexivity than assuming that we're all uh, sort of uh, very, uh, you know, directly or sort of easily changing uh, syllabuses, but also understanding that their power structures and the university itself is part of those uh, power structures. So to think that, you know, uh, changing one week in a syllabus uh, is sufficient would be uh, a, a, a very sort of a wrong way to approach this. Uh, a better way would be to sort of look at it as a continuing process in which we're also embedded so that we do not actually look at ourselves as existing outside of these power structures coming in to change them, but as ourselves also being part of these power structures. And I think then uh, you, uh, it, it's more possible to think of um, ways of thinking that do not necessarily reproduce these logics or spatiotemporal hierarchies.